So here's specified complexity, some special version of complexity, some special version of information here. Uh, I looked through uh, Meyer's book, you know, it's, it's a legacy summarizing all the uh, positions of the intelligent design creation. So I looked through this very thoroughly, trying to find his definition for specified complexity, and, and here it is. The term specified complexity is therefore a synonym for specified information or information content. Now, I don't know about you, but that's probably you. That doesn't say anything. He's basically saying specified complexity is the same as specified information. But he hasn't told us what the specified part means. That's the difference from sharing information. What does specified mean? mean? And I looked through that, and there's, there's no better definition of specified complexity. There's no methods described to measure it. And there isn't even any mention of units. In Shannon information theory, we know the units are already measured in bits. It's not present in this, this version of information theory. Uh, a fellow named Jeffrey Schaff, who wrote a very nice blog called Recursivity, uh, has also written this book. Slowly, more and more critics are, are beginning to read this book and, and dissect it. And as he says there, he says, you know, they're, they're playing a game with you. There's no such thing as specified complexity in the literature. There's nothing in scientific literature that describes the process. Uh, it's not used in science. We don't know how to use it because they never told us how to use it. Uh, he, and Shallow, just, just a better name for specified complexity, it's called creationist complexity. <laughs> uh, and an even better name for it was then suggested is uh, info schminfo. <laughs> <laughs> Information doesn't really matter, you can't measure it, you just make up stories about it. So I've really tried hard to get, get a grasp of what specified complexity is, and I've, I've got some general understanding of it. Uh, what the creations are really good at is not math and not computers, but they can make some pretty useful analogies. And so they use an analogy to describe specified complexity, and this is one they always tried out with Mount Rushmore. Okay, if you go to North Dakota and find this mountain and you've never heard anything about it before, you would have no problem saying it's design, right? Absolutely no problem at all. That's clearly something designed. That, that the reason to be able to say that is that it matches the human face. That, well, there's four human faces up there. And it matches that very, very precisely. It doesn't look like a random uh, collection of rocks that just happened to have stumbled into it something close. Well, it actually remembers, resembles a human face. And more than that, it resembles that face you find on your dollar bill. <laughs> this is what they mean by specified. That there is a prior specification, a prior description, so that when you then find something, you can actually calculate the probability they match. And so here you put this and say very, very firmly. Yes, that matches the face of George Washington. Not a problem. And we can therefore say with uh, a great deal of confidence that this is a design structure built like human beings. And I would actually agree with the creationists on that. It's just fun. We can understand that particular concept. Uh, a guy named Bill Densky has gone further and he's, he's developed something he calls the explanatory filter. He's written a whole book about this called the design inference, which says that, oh, well, we can, we can actually use this, this little sequence of questions to figure out whether something is designed or not. So he says, you start with something, whatever it is, and yes, is it contingent? Is it just a product of history? So, for instance, a chemical reaction is a contingent process. Uh, there, there's nothing uh, magical about it. You put hydrogen and oxygen together and it will react and form water. And if that's the case, then you just say, well, it's, it's necessity that you have this particular power. Uh, it's it's a complex. And if it's really simple, you can probably say, well, we can't, we can't say it was necessarily designed. For instance, if you're walking on the street and you find a penny on the, on the ground and it's heads up, rather than tails up, you wouldn't say, well, that was put there by intent by somebody who put it specifically heads up. But I'd say, 50-50 chance, it could have just been chance and never that way. Then the tricky part. If it's complicated, you ask, is it specified? Is there something that says it should be this particular pattern? If not, you would say it's chance, but if yes, if it fits a prior specification, 
you would say, okay, that was designed. And again, I can sort of agree with him. Dembski is a mathematician, but he doesn't apply the math here. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of pathetic, as you'll see. Uh, but I would kind of agree with him. Yeah, like Mount Rushmore. I, I would not put with him. But here's the problem. They're trying to use this to apply to biology. So what if you see these things? So there's a, a squid and, and rabbits. The rabbits are there for those of you who don't like staring at squid. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the prior specification? Remember, on Mount Rushmore, we see George Washington's face, and we applaud a dollar bill and say, oh, hey, that's just like this. I bet you whoever put that together to make copy it from this particular portrait. No problem doing that. Uh, where is the prior specification for squid or bunny rabbits? This is what they have to do if they want to demonstrate specified complexity. They have to be able to say, well, here's this, here's this blueprint that we've dug up in Cambrian rocks that says, here's what a bunny rabbit looks like. And we can compare it to modern bunnies, and they're identical. Gosh, there must have been a design specification event in the Cambrian. But there's no such thing. You can't apply the specified complexity theory. Okay, so specified complexity is a useless argument. It doesn't help us understand this at all. Um, the thing is, the only useful thing about it is creationists can write 500 page books going on and on about it and pretend it's a scientific concept. Okay, here's another argument that, that Meyer makes in his book. And this is, this is the one that I read and just about threw the book through my window. It's a, which is a bad idea to enter it in Minnesota. <laughs> but this argument is so dishonest and so annoying. Uh, so he's written a big, I've read a big chunk of the book and I did this and he said, okay, now, despite a thorough search, which presumably he has described in the previous pages, no material cause has been then discovered that demonstrates the power to produce large amounts of specified information. Saying there's no way biology alone can produce complex, specified information. And he says, intelligent positive demonstrated power produce large amounts of specified information. We built Mount Rushmore, for instance. So, yes, we can say that we can do that. And therefore, he says, intelligent design constitutes the best, most causally adequate explanation for information in the cell. <laughs> there's a lot wrong right there. Uh, where is the cause of the adequate explanation in design? Uh, where has intelligent design told us how to make a bunny rabbit? There's no causal explanation anywhere. Not in this book, not in any of the creation books. So that's completely false. Uh, the first argument is completely bogus. Um, we could also say, despite a thorough search, no supernatural causes have been discovered that demonstrate the power of these large quantities of information, which is true. We haven't done any supernatural processes at all. Uh, doesn't that kind of rule out intelligent design right there, since they're trying to ultimately argue for a supernatural cause? Uh, this is a false argument, phony every step of the way. This is why I felt like throwing it through the, through the window. Okay, so I've just been telling you all this stuff about crappy creationism. And I can't, I can't just leave it at that, okay? Uh, one of the things about modern biology is we do have powerful causal explanations. We do have great ideas that we can use to explain natural events. So I'm, I'm going to throw some science at you for a little while. Don't panic. I'm going to send Who's seen this cartoon? That's <laughs> Okay. XKCD has got this beautiful cartoon. Uh, it says science at work, which is what it's doing. Is it's describing uh, and diagrammatically uh, an event in scientific history that what happened is uh, we have this hypothesis of the Big Bang, right? We say there was this gigantic expansion of the universe uh, about 13 and 14 billion years ago, 